Today I'd like to do a series of problems with you. These were uh, example, we had looked at examples of uh, conversions of moles before. Um, standing in front of the mole conversion diagram, uh, we've seen mass, volume, number of particles, and even energy can be calculated. And every time I go out from the middle of the diagram, I'll put arrows in here, you've seen this before, I multiply. And then if I'm coming in on my diagram from the outside uh, rim of the diagram, I'm going to divide. Pretty easy to remember. What I'm going to be doing today is showing you examples of problems that come from our text on page 323. Three, three, and that page looks like this. And the mole diagram that they show has three spokes to it. Uh, I include the one for energy but uh, you can get by with this one also. And what I'm going to be working on are problems down towards the bottom of the page. I'm going to show you how to solve those in the steps of the, the uh, factor label method. So I'm looking at question 26, and I'll start to put that on the board for you. Tools that I need, my mole conversion diagram, probably my periodic table, and hopefully a calculator to help me with my math, although that's not essential. So let me start off here with question 26. Um, they give us a compound, calcium carbonate, CaCO3. So it's important that I know what the formula is so I can get the mass. So let me start off by calculating the molar mass of CaCO3. And I do that taking each atom, 1 times calcium, 1 times carbon, 3 times oxygen, looking up their masses on the periodic table, multiplying by the number that's uh, with each element, and then eventually all those masses that I get, I'm going to add them up. So 1 times calcium would be 1 times 40.08 grams. Copper, or uh, carbon rather, 1 times 12.011 grams and oxygen three times 15.999 grams. We'll carry these through. My calcium 40.08 grams, the carbon 12.011, and when I multiply 3 times 15.999, I get 47.997 grams. I'll add these up. I did that a little earlier on my calculator, and I got 100.088 grams. <clears throat> this is what one mole of calcium carbonate weighs. So... I'll now use that to help me in my calculation. They give us the quantity of uh, calcium carbonate in terms of moles. And the problem says 5.66 moles. So my known is the 5.66 moles of CaCO3. My unknown what I'm looking for is the mass of that quantity of moles. So if I look at my diagram up here, they give me moles. I want to go to mass. I've looked up all the information on the periodic table. I'm going out in my diagram. I'm just going to multiply. So I'll set up my factor label problem, and it'll look like this. 5.66 moles. CaCO3, I'll multiply that by the mass I figured out, 100.088 grams CaCO3. And this is per one mole of CaCO3. 
And when I do my math here, I'm looking at the units. The factor label technique allows me to cancel units that are the same thing. I've got moles of calcium carbonate up here. I got moles of calcium carbonate down here. I purposely set it up so some things are going to cancel, the moles in this case. So I'll just scratch that out. I'll do my multiplication of 5.66 times 100.88. And I did that one a little early ago, a little while ago, and I got 566.5 grams calcium carbonate. There's the end of my problem. I'll give you a moment to look at that, copy it. So this is a, a mole to mass problem. They gave us moles, they wanted mass. I'll stop here, I'll set up for another problem to show you. Uh, the next problem I'm going to do is problem 27, and that will be a question where they give me the mass, and I want to go to the moles. I'll go backwards this time. So let me set that up. Our next problem is number 27, and that's a compound that's uh, got carbon in it. It's probably an organic compound. They don't give us much information beyond that. Uh, it has two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So I've set up to multiply through to get my total mass. Let's get the numbers off the periodic table. 2 times 12.011 grams for the carbon. 6 times hydrogen's mass of 1.008 grams. And oxygen, one of them, 15.999. That's in grams. Multiplying on through, 24. 0.022 grams for the carbon, hydrogen 6.048 grams, and my oxygen just comes down as 15.999 grams. I add them all up, and I did that earlier, and my answer turned out to be 46.069. Grams per mole of C2H6O. Now, my problem gives me the mass, so I want to go on my mole diagram from the mass to the mole. So my known is mass, and that's five point, uh, 508 grams. C2H6O. My unknown is the moles of C2H6O. So I'm using my mole diagram once again. They give me mass. They want moles. I'm going to go in, so I'm going to divide by the molar mass. I'll set that up as a factor label problem also here. So we'll have our mass starting 5.08. And they want us to get the moles. Uh, I'm going to divide by ma my mass. So I put that on the bottom, C2H6O. And we had 46.069 grams for the compound. Let's see if anything cancels. I have grams up top. I have grams on the bottom. Purposely set it up that way. I'll cancel those out. Nice thing about the factor label. You can get rid of some of the units or the labels or with the numbers. If that doesn't cancel, in other words, if I made a mistake and flipped this over, things would not cancel, I know, I, know I, would, I would be doing something wrong with the problem. Now, when I do the division, this is how many moles I got. 11.027 moles of the compound. I'll step aside so you get a chance to look at that and copy it. Let me bring it up a little closer for you.
And finally, I'm going to, I'm going to turn this off again and set up for another uh, calculation. Our final problem, again using the mole diagram, is uh, number 28, and this is the same page, 323. And I will refer back to the diagram here in just a second as I, after I explain the problem setup. Uh, before I start the problem, I want to give you a clue. In the problem, they give us information, but they don't tell us, tell us what kind of a problem this is. You have to find and figure that. So here's some clues. I have a list of gases vertically there, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. Uh, that comprises all the substances on the periodic table that have two atoms that make up a molecule. They are called diatomic substances. That's a clue. When I see that, I have to think, okay, this is probably one of those gases that's in the air or surrounding us somehow. This, this next clue is they have the word volume in the problem. And the third clue is they give us conditions for that volume or standard temperature and pressure. So that tells me when I go to my mole diagram, I'm looking for that information. And so I'm going to use this section of my mole diagram where I go from mole to volume, and I can also go from volume to mole. Now, what do they give us? They tell us in the problem that it's got 1.5 moles of chlorine gas. They could actually give us any gas because they'll all pretty much behave the same way. You might remember that 22.4 liter box. Okay, that comes in handy here. So 1.5 moles of Cl2 gas or any gas is going to be what I know. So let me put that down. This will be my mole quantity known. One point five mole moles of CL two. And the unknown or I'm sorry, this is in the known. And the unknown is what volume is that? And what I'll do Again, refer to my diagram. I'm going to go from mole out to volume. So I'm going to be going in that direction. I'll multiply. And let me set that up for you. I didn't have to do any mass calculations on this because we're t treating it as a volume and as a gas. So let me put down what I know. 1.50 mole of Cl2. Then I'm going to multiply. The conditions for our, our gas are STP. So I'm going to use the 22.4 volume of Cl2 for my gas. I'll put that over one mole. Cl2. I'll step back and see if I can cancel anything out. I have moles of Cl2 here, moles of Cl2 on the denominator. They'll cancel. I'll multiply on through. 1.50 times 22.4, and when I did the math for that one, I got 33.6 liters. Cl2. That's the end of our problem. That was a pretty simple problem. I didn't have to do as much with the uh, calculations of math, so it makes it a little easier. I'll stop here, and uh, I'll pick up with some more conversions like this at a future video.